little boy, Eric's little boy, Silas. He's been sick, but he's doing better. Had to take him over to the hospital the other night. These little ones can pick up all kinds of stuff, folks. They sure can. Amen. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of Genesis, chapter number 10 with me tonight, please. Genesis 10. In verse number 6. Genesis chapter number 10 and verse number 6. The Hebrew word for this is Bereshith. And what it simply means is the beginnings, the beginnings. The first book in the Bible is the book of beginnings. In verse number 6, And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mitzram, Phut, and Canaan, the sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, and Sabta, Rama, and Sabtika, and the sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Note carefully. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kalna in the land of Shinar. And out of that land went forth Asher and builded Nineveh and the city of Rehoboth and Kela, and so forth on down through the scripture. If you'll notice, it says in verse number 10 that Nimrod's kingdom was Babel. Father, we pray that you'd bless your word tonight. And we pray that you'd open our hearts to receive it. Help us, Father, for this little bit of time that we have come together before thee and in thy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, if you make the connection, Babel is Babylon, as it shows up later in the Word of God. If you'll notice in verse number 8, Nimrod is the leader of the first insurrection against God. Insurrection in the sense that they intended to build a tower that would reach into the heavens in, uh, in, uh, in uh, rebellion against Almighty God. Nimrod was the first man in the Bible that ever pulled all the forces of the earth together in a concerted effort to overthrow God in His sovereignty and His reign over them. So therefore Nimrod is said to be a hunter, and we believe that he's a hunter not of animals, but a hunter of souls. We believe that his, uh, his main uh, uh, work was in, in deceiving and drawing men and women away from the Lord. Now Nimrod is a historical figure, he really lived. And this is an historical account. The book of Genesis is a history book. And it goes back, and I believe every word of Genesis. I believe Adam and Eve are real. I believe the Garden of Eden is real. I believe in the fall of man. I believe all these things. They're not allegories to me, as some in the pulpits teach. They are real. As far as I'm concerned, Adam was a real person living in a real world. And so is Nimrod. Nimrod shows up not only in the Bible, but he shows up in occult literature. He's all over the place. He's referred to in a number of different ways. He's called Osiris. He had a wife whose name was Semiramis. She's also called Isis. They had a son whose name was Tammuz. If you'll remember, our brother last Sunday was preaching about Tammuz from the book of Ezekiel. This Tammuz shows up throughout the Old Testament in such a way that Israel even changed the name of one of their months and named it Tammuz because he was so well known. Nimrod died. When Nimrod died, Semiramis began to preach that Tammuz was the personification or reincarnation of Nimrod in the flesh. Tammuz eventually died, and, and Semiramis began to preach that Tammuz had descended into the other, uh, underworld, the netherworld, and that he would arise, that he would come up from the dead. And so we have a, we have a false prophet, Semiramis, we have a satanic energized man, Nimrod, and we have a false Christ in Tammuz, who is raised from the dead. A, a play on the real resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Satan is good at counterfeiting. He likes to counterfeit. He is good at spinning lies. He's good at causing people to believe his lies. And he's a master of deceit. And so we have a Satan, we have a Satan, we have Satan, we have his false prophet, and we have his Christ or his Antichrist. We have an unholy trinity showing up all the way back in the book of Genesis here in the Word of God. So what do you do with something like that? What does that mean? That means that from day one, 
In Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 15, when God gave the prophecy of the seed of the woman, that this seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent, that Satan set about from that moment on to corrupt the seed. And his purpose was to corrupt the seed so he could stop the coming of the Mashiach or the Messiah. This is why the intervention in Genesis 6 of the angels to the daughters of men to corrupt the seed. He assaulted the image of God in man. He wanted to destroy that image. For if he can destroy the image of God in man, there is nothing left to save. Christ went to the cross and paid his and shed his blood so that he could save humanity, mankind. He became a man to die as a man for men. And the Lord Jesus Christ gave himself so that we could be saved. So to corrupt the image is what he intended to do. The image certainly, certainly suffered because when Adam fell, he died spiritually. But he still retained a certain amount of that image of God because it talks about that in the New Testament before the new birth shows up. But when the Lord Jesus Christ came in the book of Hebrews chapter number 1, the Bible says that he is the express image of God. Yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ came to restore the fallen image of God in man. And so now we are recreated in Christ's image. Hallelujah to God. And that's what's so important about all of that. Now what's going on today in the occult world is a direct assault on the image of God in man. Satan does not give up easily. He does not quit easily. Remember, he's been around a whole lot longer than we have. And he has a motive and a purpose in what he is doing. So a lady says the other day that she sold her soul to the devil. Name's Katy Perry. She sold her soul to the devil for earthly gain. Now, if you've read your Bible, you know over there in the book of Luke chapter number four, you know in chapter number four and verse number five, look at it in your scripture. Luke chapter number four, here's what it says. In Luke chapter number four, verse number five, the divine text says, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Don't let that fly by. That's a powerful statement. Here is a being that has the ability to take one in time. Either he transported Christ in time or transported time in front of Christ. I believe he transported time in front of Christ. In verse number five, he showed him the kings of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this power will I give thee. And watch this. For that is delivered unto me. And whomsoever I will, I give it. And he has gall. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. So don't think for a minute you're going to scare the devil. Don't think you're going to holler boo and Satan's going to run. He'll holler boo and you'll run. <laughs> If you're not right with God, he'll scare you to death. The spirit world can materialize before your eyes, can bring things into your life that'll blow your mind, drive you insane without the power of Christ. Just get off of it just a moment and I'll chase a rabbit for just a second. Next Sunday morning in Sunday school, we're going to be talking about UFOs. We're going to be talking about abductions. We're going to be talking about people involved in it. And a lot of the people that are involved in UFOs, in plain words, they've had UFO encounters, have been messing around with the occult before it happened. The occult is associated with UFOs. Make no mistake about that. The evidence is overwhelming. The evidence is overwhelming that UFOs exist, but they are not what people think they are. They are real, but they are not what people normally think they are. But here's what's important. People have an encounter with UFO, they have an abduction, they have this and that and so forth that happens to them. And then afterward, they are haunted. They are driven to insanity by spirits coming into their house, coming after them over and over and over again that are associated with UFOs. Do you know how they get the spirits to stop coming to them? Do you know how they get these little men, these little grays they call them with the big eyes, the big head and the little body? Do you know how they stop them from coming against them? In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Christ against you and that thing leaves. That ought to tell you something. That ought to tell you that what's going on is a spiritual deception of a magnitude that's beyond imagination. 
if the blood of Jesus Christ and the name of the Son of God has power over so-called extraterrestrials, then we know what's going on, don't we? We know what's going on. We know that the blood of Jesus Christ, my friend, is all powerful in every universe that's ever been made. Wherever and however it exists, there's just one God and one creator that sits alone and above and beyond all of his creation. And the name of Jesus, you may not understand it. A lost and dying world may give no credibility to it, but you can believe every demon in hell, every extraterrestrial knows all about the name of Jesus. And the reason that they flee is because there is power in the blood. The Lord Jesus said in the New Testament, he said that the devil, or James did, James says the devils believe and tremble. Amen. They tremble because they know power. And that power is infinitely greater than theirs. So the next time you're confronted with a spiritual entity, you've got a problem, some kind of, some kind of a satanic assault, plead the blood and call upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And he becomes our protector and our defender and our high tower and our buckler and our shield. Glory to God. He's everything we need. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So... In here in the book of Luke chapter number four, the Bible says that he offered to our Lord Jesus Christ what was already, what already belonged to our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's the kingdoms of the world. But the Lord Jesus Christ did not come the first time to reign as a king. He came the first time to die as the Lamb of God. But when he comes the second time, he will come and take the kingdoms of this world. He will take them by force. They will become his kingdom, and he will reign with a rod of iron over the house of Israel and over, the, over this entire world. So this young lady, and I would that you'd pray for, I mentioned her name again, Katie Perry. She is an Illuminati uh, priestess. She conducted a witchcraft ceremony in front of the entire world at the, at the recent Grammys. It was an Illuminati themed occult ritual. Various media reports say that she dressed up as a witch. And her performance included a Knights Templar cross. Now the Knights Templar are definitely an historical group. They existed. And the Knights Templar are uh, uh, associated with the Ark of the Covenant, with the Holy Grail, and a lot of other things. And the Knights Templar were some of the first bankers on this earth. And so the Knights Templar are associated in a mystical way with a lot of things about the Lord and about Israel. I'm not promoting them tonight. They did exist. But it says here that, that uh, she wore a cross of the Knights Templar emblazoned across her chest. There was a beast with Moloch horns. Moloch is that creature in the Old Testament. They laid their babies into its arms. They beat the drums. And this thing was in the Valley of Hinnom. And this thing was erected in the Valley of Hinnom. And they laid their babies in its arms and offered human sacrifice. And it would roll into its belly, which was an iron furnace, and consume a screaming baby. And they beat the drums. Is that the God you want to serve? And a beast with Moloch horns, dancers in dark robes with devil horns, protruding from her heads, from their heads, and pole dancing on an upright witch's broom. At the end of the ceremony, Perry was burned at the stake as the song ended. Of course, in parenthesis, it was a typology of it. It was a uh, facsimile of it. All of this hardcore occult symbolism did not get into her performance by accident. The attention to detail that this performance exhibited shows that someone put a lot of thought and effort into it. So was she kidding when she said she sold her soul to the devil? Or was she telling the truth? Only she and God know. But this kind of stuff that she is doing is not for amateurs. She is either working with someone who is deep into the occult or she is deep into it herself. And the elite love it. The elite love it. And those of you in my Sunday school class, you know who I'm talking about. What I'm talking about, this spark of divinity inside you and those that feel like that they are above you and the elite that receive their own communication with that great spirit off there in the netherworld. And these people feel like they are definitely better than you are. 
And there's a movement afoot right now to rid this earth of most of its population so that they can create a utopia here, a Shambhala, they call it, a Shangri-La, a place where they can live on this earth, and you are their slave. You are their slave. They are better than you. They do not understand the word democracy. That means nothing to these people. A democratic republic is what we are. Republic means nothing governed by law. And you are seeing lawlessness right now in the government of the United States of America where they have no more respect for the Constitution than a rag laying on the ground. You're seeing it, folks. You've got to be blind not to see what's going on. And it's a preview of what's coming. And so Miss Perry, of course, was, uh, was showing the world that she has, making, that she has made her profession. Now, she has uh, made a song not too long ago called E.T. Now, E.T., of course, is, a, is an acronym for extraterrestrial. And I get this because I research it, not because I've ever heard the song. I don't listen to Katy Perry. I don't listen to Madonna. I don't listen to Lady Gaga. I don't listen to Beyonce. I don't listen to any of them. I got better things to do. <clears throat> but I can sure read. And all you've got to do is type some word, a few words into Google and do some research, and you can find out the lyrics. Do you want to hear the lyrics of E.T. That, uh, that Katy Perry sang? Some of you kids probably have heard these lyrics. Here we go. I'm not going to read all of them because some of them are very embarrassing. But she talks about in her lyrics about having a, 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 a physical relationship with the devil. Let's put it that way. And in that she says, here are the words she's singing to the devil. You're so hypnotizing. Could you be the devil? Could you be an angel? Futuristic lover. Different DNA? They don't understand you. You're from a whole nother world. A different dimension. You open my eyes. Did you get it? You open my eyes. The gnosis, the knowledge that it comes. I'm ready to go. Lead me into the light. The light. Is not the Lord Jesus Christ the light? That's not who she's talking about. But she says, infect me with your love. Fill me with your poison. Take me, take me. Want to be a victim. Ready for abduction. Boy, you're an alien. Your touch so foreign. It's supernatural. Extraterrestrial. And on she goes and prays and worship and singing to Satan. Now, a lot of folks my age hear something like that. They think, where in the world did you get to? What's going on? Is this stuff? You don't really believe this is being sung out there. This is mild. <laughs> This is mild compared to what's being sung out there. You don't know why your kids are rejecting the Lord Jesus. They reject the gospel of Christ. They reject the word of God. It's because they've picked up that spirit. The word, the word is a powerful thing. If it's the truth, it'll make you free. If it's a lie, it'll bind you up. And if you're hearing the wrong words, they bring the wrong spirit. And that's the whole idea. Because they're going after our youth. They're going after our young people. When I was a kid and the Beatles came to America, I want to hold your hand. That was what they sang. Yeah! The girls went screaming mad. Everybody had a time. I want to hold your hand. Well, that's just as innocuous as anything can be. What's that mean? But before they finished, they were singing about the yellow submarine. Yes, they were. They got deep into Eastern mysticism. It, was, it became satanic. It started innocent enough with just a simple, I want to hold your hand. But it wound up in Satanism. And they got into drugs deeply. They got into all this stuff. And see, I lived through it, folks. Didn't have to read this stuff. I was around when they showed up. I watched them when they got on the Ed Sullivan show. I saw all that firsthand. I was there. I was there when Jack Ruby, I was watching television when Jack Ruby shot Oswald to death. I was watching the news and I witnessed it firsthand. I know I'm old. I've been around a while. I feel it every day. But the truth of the matter here is when I preach this to you, it's because I know I've been here long enough to see what's going on. They're going after our young people's mind. They want to destroy them. They're wicked and vile creatures. And they don't care what they do. 
Here are three avenues they get the kids by, music, sex, and drugs. They go after them. They go after them big time. They want them. They want to take them. They want to destroy them. They want to prepare a generation that will embrace the Antichrist, no questions asked. And they're getting ready to do that. And in every one of these avenues, they're working overtime. Fox News said April 19, 2012. This is on Fox News. Pop artist turning to satanic imagery to drum up controversy and sales, experts say. This is from Fox News. In plain words, they're turning to Satanism because it is controversial and also because it excites, because Satan is a power. There's no question about that. And so if they can introduce kids to the occult world, they're going to pull them in, suck them down into that area where they will destroy them because they will begin to receive that spirit. When a CD starts with Belial, Behemoth, Beelzebub, Asmodeus, Satanist, Lucifer, Hail Satan, Archelangelo, and features the song titles From Hardship to Hell and Depth of Satan's Eyes, it begs the question, is your band promoting Satanism? There was a time not too long ago when someone said Satanism, they'd think, man, that's a bunch of nuts out there. And everybody would say, they would, they would, they would shun them. You know, it, wasn't, it wasn't popular. It wasn't popular to be a Satanist, to worship the devil. When Anton LaVey out there in California started his Church of Satan, he was all over the news. I mean, everywhere, wearing his black robes and having his inverted crosses and all that went on on their altar and all this stuff and the candles in the darkness and this mystery surrounding, here's a man worshiping the devil. It mesmerized the whole world. Why would somebody want to worship the devil? You remember what I told you in Sunday school? Lucifer? Satan and Christ are exalted to the same level. Remember that a true Satanist, a witch or a Satanist, believes that Lucifer is more powerful than the God of the Old Testament. Remember that. The God of the Old Testament to them is a demiurge. And Lucifer, Satan, and Christ are all raised up to the same level. Big mistake. The Lord Jesus Christ is exalted above all principalities and powers. He's above everything, seated at the right hand of the Father. But they're not told that, and they don't believe that. They believe what I just told you, and so they worship the devil. Why would you worship the devil, preacher? Because he can give you power. He can make you rich. If you want to sell your soul to Satan, he'll pile the gold around you. He will make you very welcome in this world. The Bible says the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience, same spirit. He will give you unbelievable riches. He can exalt you above mankind, make a leader out of you, quote unquote, antichrist. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Some of the other lyrics in here, is, and this is, you have to be careful because I don't want to pull a demon up in here. But here's another one to the devil. Who is she that kneels so respectfully before me? A virgin of snow white purity? Do not fear, my fortunate one. Let us consummate our igneous union. Boy, what a wicked thing. But this isn't a song. These are the lyrics they're singing to Satan. You say, preacher, don't you think some of them think it's just a big game? Yeah, some of them do. They think it's just a game, having fun, so forth, you know, daily dallying around, playing with a Ouija board, and all reading tarot cards and having seances and all. That's just a joke to some of these people. But the stuff they're playing with is not a joke. It's a real world. When you open Pandora's box, you can't put back in what comes out. And it'll come out. God gave you in your body and in your spirit protection. And you have to give place to the devil. And by giving place to the devil, you open yourself up for demonic possession. You open yourself up for the horrors of hell as they're poured out in your soul, in your life. Folks, I grew up in a hell hole. I grew up in a dog fight. I grew up with drunks busting bottles over bedsteads and shoving them up under the throat of somebody and say, I'll cut your guts out. I grew up hearing every filthy, foul mouth thing that a child should never hear. I thought that was normal till I got saved by the grace of God. I didn't grow up in a pampered life. I didn't grow up with a, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I came out of hell. But thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. I know what it can do to you. I know what it did to people that I loved. I saw how it destroyed their lives. 
You ever watch anybody die of cirrhosis of the liver? It's not a pretty sight. Tongue swells up, turn yellow. Body begins to swell. Liver's an organ begins to, that begins to fail the function of the body. Take on a smell because it's not processing the, uh, the, uh, the toxins in the body. And it's a horrible death to watch somebody die of cirrhosis of the liver. It happens. It happens. And where it comes from, it comes from drinking. And then there are those diseases that come from, from the immorality, like, uh, like hepatitis that you can pick up. Things that you carry with you the rest of your life. You can destroy your, you can destroy your liver. You can destroy your, your kidneys. You can destroy your brain. You can pick up cancers that are associated with promiscuity. Uh, the cervix, for example. Young women are subject to a cancer of the cervix if they start out in an immoral lifestyle. They don't tell you that in Hollywood. They're not going to tell you that on TV. The people are selling this, this music, if you want to call it. They're not going to tell you that. But that's a fact. Ask a doctor one time, and he'll tell you real fast what can happen to the human body. Because God made you to live a certain way. And if you cross those barriers and, 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 and defy him, you'll pay a price for it, and you'll pay a dear price for it. And so they can worship the devil. Here's one of the terms that he has. He or she, whoever wrote this thing, sings. He said, now listen to this. This is just the start, dear friends, for I have come to claim revenge. My victims turning, running scared. You people better go and beware. Your weak God cannot help you now. Isn't that an arrogant thing? For Satan to say, your weak God cannot help you now. But the Bible says the day will come when God takes the Lord Jesus at his second advent. The Bible says a, a strong angel that comes down from heaven. Heaven begins to open. The powers of heaven come down. And they'll take Satan and cast him into a lake of fire and brimstone where he will spend eternity. And if he believes the Bible, he knows that day's coming. No question about that. How many of you know about Lady Gaga? Well, don't want to know any more about her. <laughs> If you never heard her name, if you never saw her or Madonna or Katy Perry or what's this last one to go screaming mad? My, Miley Cyrus going screaming mad. If, if you never see these women again, you'd be better off because they are exercising a horrible influence over young people today. So these Grammys are satanic worship service, unlocking the spirit of hell. Millions of people. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I've got it right here, but this one they put on the internet on YouTube. This one song was on YouTube, and it's already had over 250 something million views. That's a lot of people watching this stuff on YouTube. 250 million, folks. We don't have 250 million 17 year olds in America. That means there's an awful lot of other people watching this garbage. Exactly. A lot of people are watching it. Occultism teaches, Alice Bailey, in the, a theosophist, wrote a book called The Externalization of the Hierarchy. Now, I'm not going to all the detail tonight. Come to Sunday school next Sunday morning. We'll be talking about it again. We'll be talking about the monad, the one, the pleroma, and all of that as it progresses itself down to where we are. But a theosophist, the two words combined, means wisdom of God. And Helen Blavatsky was a Russian, came to this country, brought that with her. Alice Bailey was her disciple, wrote the book, The Externalization of the Hierarchy. In it, she poses that the time will come when all of a sudden from the occult world, all of this knowledge is just going to bust loose. It's just going to permeate society. They're waiting for that time to come. They're preparing the masses of the people for the moment when all of a sudden there is this universal consciousness. How many of you have ever noticed that when they come together and sing their songs that they want it to be universal? This universal consciousness where by the fact that they have this universal consciousness, this power busts loose on the stage of time. It just all of a sudden is made known. And that's what they're looking for. They're biding their time for that moment when it happens. You say, what's holding them back, preacher? 2 Thessalonians 2. Yes. Yes. He that letteth will let Amen. till he be taken out of the way. Right. I'm going to go through it one more time because it's important. They firmly believe that there needs to come a time when all of a sudden, all of humanity is inundated with this power of this spirit. 
And by doing that, they're able to create the consciousness and the power necessary to bring about the change that they want. They want this change. They want this power. They want this intervention of spirit beings. They want all this to just become open, out where everybody can see it. No longer esoteric, but exoteric. They're working toward that time. They're waiting, biding their time. They don't believe 2 Thessalonians 2, but I do. They don't believe that my God is greater than their God, but they're going to find out. Have you ever wondered why that the armies in heaven come against the armies of Satan? And have you ever wondered why that they have the gall and audacity to believe that they can defeat that one that comes out of heaven? That's why. That's why. They've been completely deceived into believing that their God, Lucifer, is greater than this God that we worship. But the sad thing is they'll find out real fast. Real fast. The Bible said in Revelation 19 that when he comes, a sharp two-edged sword comes out of his mouth, which is the Word of God. There are three main areas tonight, and I'll close with these, where they're working over time. These are the things that they're trying to get done. They're in your face, but they're subtle too. Number one, they want you to embrace sodomy. They are pushing it down your throat. You can get, you pick up on a little innuendos from the talking heads at six o'clock in the evening on the news. You get there, you get that, you get the movement, the, the, what they're saying, you get the tone of their voice. The idea is if you haven't embraced sodomy, you are homophobic. That's a term that was created by someone somewhere, has no meaning whatsoever. But the idea is that being homophobic, a phobia, a phobia as defined by the, by a psychologist, psychiatrist means an unnatural fear. Hydrophobia is when you're bitten by a rabid raccoon and you begin to show an unnatural fear for water. It's one of the symptoms, the fact that rabies raging in your body, hydrophobia, arachnophobia, you're afraid of, you have, a, you have a, 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 an unnatural fear, spiders, preacher phobia, you have an unnatural phobia of preachers. <laughs> A lot of people have that. <laughs> Phobias, okay. You let them define for you the way you think and you're going to get in trouble. I don't care what they think. I don't care their definitions. That's meaningless to me. What does the Bible say? The Bible clearly condemns sodomy. All right, the book does. Their argument is not with me. Their argument is with the Bible. Leviticus chapter number 18, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, Romans chapter number 1, 1 Timothy 1, 10. On and on and on it goes, clearly condemning, condemning sodomy. But here's the point. When they had this satanic worship service, Katy Perry, what did they do during that service? They had a marriage ceremony. Notice the connection now. They're making the connection public. What happened? Sodomites got married during a satanic worship service. Therefore, if you embrace the spirit of sodomy, you have embraced a satanic spirit. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's the bottom line. If you embrace a satanic spirit, you will embrace the Antichrist. Because that's where he comes from. You can't have it both ways. If you embrace, and that's the way they do it, they do it subtly. That's they, they take a step and a step and they build on it, build on it. If they make a mistake, they take a step backward, they withdraw. Do you know what a Fabian socialist is? A Fabian socialist? You got two types of socialists. You got one that comes in, beats your door down, kicks it down. Lock, take, the Gestapo takes you at night, takes you away, and locks you up. And that's it. They put a bullet in your head, and that's what uh, that's what uh, Lenin did, and that's what the rest of them did in the Bolshevik Revolution, Russia. A Fabian socialist is subtle, underhanded. He gains your respect. He worms his way in. He begins to infiltrate, plant his poison and ever so slowly draw you into his web. That's exactly the way it's been done. All right, here's the second thing, is the aligning of the world's powers in preparation for the one world government. You're watching a remarkable uh, realignment of the world's powers right now. Vladimir Putin 
has championed himself, has come out publicly as the defender of Christianity. In the last few days, he's made direct statements as to the immorality of America, about sodomy and about everything else. He is preaching to us. Now somebody says, well, he's, he's, uh, he's got a mistress that was his uh, gym teacher or something like that, and, and he divorced his wife and all that. Well, you know, a man, the thing is, if you, when you spin your own righteousness, you have a way of categorizing things. Everybody does it that way. When you create your own righteousness, you can always put a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit. You can always manage to justify yourself. But if your righteousness is the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you have to compare yourself with Him. You're never able to justify yourself because He's better than us. But in any event, watch the powers as they realign. Keep your eye on that right now because it's changing. There's a powerful force in movement. And then number three is the culmination of a massive campaign of deception designed as UFOs to prepare the world for the Antichrist. And that's a whole nother thing. I gave you just a little bit about UFOs a few minutes ago when I talked about how that people associated with UFOs, not all, but eventually they all do come under the power of the occult world. But UFOs and the occult world are just like that. One and the same. It is a reality, but it is not a physical reality like we understand it. They are not coming from some far distant star. They are not greater than us with this intelligence that they want to come and save us. No, 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 no. They've been spinning this for a long time, and they are coming with a massive deception. I can't think of his name. Uh, I wish I could. I, I should have written it down. He's a Ph.D., and the reason I say Ph.D. is because he doesn't come as Christian perspective. He comes as, as an intellectual investigator who has spent 40 years, 40 years in the UFO phenomenon. 40 years from this man who's respected now. He's respected. And he says, and he, to, to paraphrase him, he says, the world of the UFO is real, but the reality is not what you think. And that there is a deception behind it that boggles the mind. And the deeper I get into it, the, the more afraid I become. Because something is coming to this earth that people are not prepared for. They're not ready. And it is going to be unleashed upon mankind. And according to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, God is going to send them a strong delusion. It's coming, folks. It's coming. You're not going to be able to stop it. There's nothing you can do about it. You can no more stop it as they could have stopped World War II or World War I. You can't stop it. It's coming. The only thing you can do is put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, who's the Lord of glory. In plainer words, a confrontation is about to take place that is in the heavens, that is greater than humanity. A confrontation is on, is on the verge of taking place, of happening, that a human being is nothing but a spider compared to what the powers that are going to be unleashed. This thing is going to be massive when it happens, and it's going to drag all of humanity down with it, and except those days should be shortened, no flesh should be left alive. And you will not be able to withstand it intellectually. You will not be able to withstand it with your human ability. The only way that you will be able to stand against it is by the power of the Word of God and the written Scripture and the Holy Spirit. But aren't you so glad tonight that God revealed to the Apostle Paul a mystery? He said, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we call it the rapture. He's coming to get his bride. I don't have to combat this stuff. What I've got to do is just simply get the message out and tell you it's coming. And you're not going to stop it. It's coming. In the next few days, few, few weeks, few months, few years, if it lasts that long, I don't think it's going to last long before the Lord comes, but however long it lasts, watch these things. Be keen to it. Be sensitive to it. And by the grace of God, I'll try my dead level best to keep it to show you when something does develop that bears directly on what I'm talking about tonight.
Do you know the Lord Jesus? Folks, your countrymen have accepted the wrong spirit. They're embracing it right now. Your countrymen have. And that spirit's going to lead them down a path that they're not prepared to go down. The Lord Jesus is the only escape. That's a good way to put it. In this generation, it's an escape. To be born again is an escape. Amen. Father, in thy name we pray that you'd use what I've said tonight for the glory of God. In Jesus' sweet name we ask it. For his sake we pray. Amen. Let's stand up, brother. Brother Silver.